Welcome to the Hank Haney Podcast, brought to you by Haney University, my website. That's where you go to check out all the information you need to know about getting a golf lesson from me. So HaneyUniversity.com is the place to go. And the Hank Haney Podcast is also brought to you by Bet Online, which is your number one source for your sports betting needs this season from baseball, golf, soccer, uh, right to, uh, to all the top fights on the uh, UFC, MMA, and boxing, every stat, every matchup, and even live odds and spreads while the games are being played. Uh, when the game's over, head on over to the casino, the online casino. You can get in on a game of either blackjack or poker or unwind on one of the over 150 slot games. Head to the website today. Get in on the action and use the promo code BLEAV for your 50% bonus on your first deposit. That's Bet Online, where the game starts. BetOnline.ag is where you go. All right, today I want to talk about uh, a subject that just keeps coming up. Every time I give a golf lesson, my students ask me about the U.S. Open at Pinehurst. And they don't really ask me about Bryson DeChambeau winning. They ask me about Rory McIlroy losing. And a lot of people think he gave that tournament away. And I, 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 see, I see this all over the place. I hear about it. I read about it. I read about it. And I want to tell you about what, what my position on this is. First off, Rory McIlroy is an incredible player. He's won four majors, four major championships. Not many people have won four majors. Uh, it, it is a short list in the history of golf who have won that many majors. He's won two PGAs, a U.S. Open, and a Open Championship. The Masters eludes him for the career Grand Slam, and every year he goes to the Masters, he tries to complete the Grand Slam, and every year it, it's, it's tough to do. Hasn't won a major, Roy McIlroy, since 2014. But yet, people who follow golf, and even Roy McIlroy himself, thinks that even though he hasn't won a major since 2014, thinks that because he was on the lead at the U.S. Open at Pinehurst, and he did have a two-shot lead with like four holes to go, far from over, uh, you know, if I was a betting man, I, I I definitely would have put my money on Rory because he had the lead. And I wouldn't have thought in a it would have been a long shot that he would lose without a playoff. But any way you look at it, it is it, it was not a foregone conclusion. As good as Rory is, and he is a he is a great driver in the golf ball. He has putted much better in the last couple of years than he has probably in his whole career, at least more consistently. And he made a bunch of putts at Pinehurst on Sunday. I mean, two putts over 30 feet, one uh, in the 25 foot range. You make three putts like that in a round of golf. And uh, the, the odds say that if you're a, a great ball striker like Roy McIlroy, you, you should win that tournament. You should win that tournament. Something great usually has to happen. I always tell people you, you, you're going to look for a chip in, a pitch in, a, a, a hold shot, a hold sand shot, hole a bomb. Uh, you know, it's, it's something special needs to happen. But to, and and a lot of times I'll also say you have to you have to hold two out of two putts on the last three holes is typically what has to happen. Now, they might be putts for par, they may be putts for whatever, but but you have to hold putts on the land. And I'm not talking about, you know, 20 footers, but some putt that, that you got to stand over and you got to grind over. And uh, Rory had those those putts. He had a, a, a putt on, uh, well, he had, he had a three putt on 16. He had a putt on, on 17 that he hold. He got it up and in. It was a short one, but he got it up and in. And then on 18, he's got a, he's got a putt to, to tie and he misses it. Okay, so he didn't he didn't fulfill that that uh, prerequisite that I usually see for winning major championships. But 
I, I analyze the, the, the end of that round a little differently than, than a lot of people do. I look at, I look at the shots that needed to be played and how do they favor each player? And how do they favor that player based on the shots that they're comfortable playing with and the shots that their golf swing are most designed to play? And I'll give you a a couple examples of that. When you have a player who has a club across the line at the top of the swing, meaning for a right-handed player, the club is pointed to the right of the target line at the top of the swing, the tendency for that player is to bring the club down a little bit from inside, and it will be easier for that player to draw the ball than it will be to fade the golf ball. Rory McIlroy is one of those players. Players who do the opposite have the club pointed left at the top, right-handed player pointed left at the top, a laid off position. It's easier to cut the ball. But Rory has it across the line. He also has a tendency to lay his head back. It lays back this way when he comes into the golf ball. And when he lays his head back, it makes it very difficult to swing across the golf ball. And when you want to play a cut shot, you want your path of your swing to be at least a couple degrees out to in. So two or three degrees across the ball, a minimum of one degree across the ball. You, you want the path to the, to the left, club face open a little bit relative to the path, because remember, you want your you want your fades to start to the left of your target. You do not want your fades to start to the right of your target. So the reason I I bring this up is when when I I, I look at the the last few holes of that tournament, the the U.S. Open, I look and I say, okay, the the tee shot on 14 does not favor Rory McIlroy. He hit it. it's, It's shot. You need a little cut off the tee. He tried to play a cut, and he got a little bit of a hook. And he got lucky. So he got a break, it hit the gallery, and he ended up making par, no problem. Uh, 15, he has the shot to play into that par three. He can send it straight up in the air. Not everybody can. He can send it straight up in the air. But for whatever reason, he decided he was going to hit one club more. He was in between seven and eight, so he took a seven. And when you do that, you're going to flight the ball down a little bit. And you would never do that into a rock hard green. I would never see Tiger Woods do something like that. I made a comment on Twitter, on the X, that uh, if Steve Williams had been the caddy, no way would he have flighted that ball down. That wasn't a knock on, on Rory's caddy. You know, people jumped all over me on Twitter like they always do, which is fine. And uh, it, it's, it's especially the Rory, uh, you know, apologizers. And, and there are many of them, and the Rory fans, and there are many of them. Uh, they jump all over me, and and I'm not. I wasn't criticizing, you know, the fact that he has a friend caddy for him. Matter of fact, I like I like the friend caddy. I'm a fan of the friend caddy. Uh, players are out on that tour for weeks and weeks and weeks away from their family, uh, you know all day long at the golf course. If I was a player, I I don't think I would hire like the best caddy. I would hire somebody that was a the best caddy that I knew I could enjoy my time with because they spend a lot of time. So I'm not I'm not opposed. I am not opposed to the friend caddy. I was just pointing out that when Steve Williams was Tiger Woods caddy, he 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 would go into a major championship and he would say, the goal this week is to make no mistakes. That's the goal. The goal is to make no mistakes. That didn't happen every week. That, that, even the best caddies have things that they probably second guess. I'm sure they do. Uh, there's plenty of them. You know, a read on a putt, a club, a, 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 you know, should I have stepped in and said something here? Should I have calmed him down a little bit better there? There's all kinds of things that 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 happen, but on on the the fifteenth hole, the par three, that ball needed to be sent straight up in the air because the greens rock hard. And Rory hit a good shot, did a great shot, but it didn't stop. It didn't stop. That was a mistake. It's not. I'm not. I'm not like saying get a new caddy. I'm not saying fire the caddy. I'm not saying uh, you know the, the 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 caddy's bad. I'm not saying he isn't a great caddy. 
I'm not saying he isn't the caddy for Rory, the best caddy for Rory. I never said that. I just said that was a mistake. That's a mistake. That's a mistake. And, and uh, Rory hits the shot. Rory has the final call. It's not the caddy's fault, but that was a mistake. Whether it was a mental mistake, a choke mistake, could the caddy have stepped in and said something? Of course he could have. Uh, but that, I was just pointing out that that was a mistake. Okay, now we get to 16. 16 sets up great for Rory McIlroy. Uh, there's room to, to hit the draw off the tee, drives it right down the fairway, knocks on the green. And then he misses the short putt. I have no excuse for the short putt. I guess what I'm trying to justify here in this podcast is, is that I don't think this is this Rory Roy McElroy is some kind of a choker. I just don't I just don't see it. I he's too he's too good of a champion. He's won four majors. I know he hasn't won since 2014. He's won four majors. He's a little bit light on 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 being in contention in the last 10 years. So I'm going to I'm going to get to that in a second. Uh so so that that makes it a little more difficult to handle. But no one finds it easy to close out major championships. That is just a fact that people just seem to not want to understand or admit. And Rory McIlroy is, is, is he is not to be confused with Tiger Woods, you know, who, who was phenomenal at closing out major championships, or Ben Hogan, who was phenomenal at closing out major championships. He, he not, con, not to be confused with those guys. As great as he is, he's not to be confused with those guys. But on 16, he misses a short putt. I have no excuse for that. Uh, the shot on 17, the iron shot, n- not a good shot. But when you can stand up there, when the walls, the, the wheels are falling off, the walls are closing in, and you can you can get that ball up and in like he did, that is a clutch, clutch, clutch shot. That is a clutch shot. Uh, hey, give him credit for that shot on 17. Okay, And I treat every shot independent of the other shots before. I mean, it's, it's one shot at a time in golf. 18 sets up for a fade. Roy McIlroy is not good at fading the golf ball. I already talked about that. That's not, I'm not saying he's terrible at it. It's not his best shot. Under pressure, he does not want to hit a fade driver. I can promise you that is not what he wants to hit. So bombing up the left side, hope to get a good lie. But if you try a cut and you don't cut it, you might get double crossed. Now it's really left. If you don't, if you try the cut and you hit a push cut, now you're over there on the right and you can't you can't make par from over there at Piners uh, number two on the 18th hole. It's very, very difficult from the right right uh, bunkers or, or trees, you're not where you want to be. OK, so miss it up there to the left. Get a good luck, get a good break and you're OK. Problem was he got a bad break. OK, Bryson DeChambeau got a bad break, too, but that wasn't an easy drive for him either. And Rory didn't hit, you know, the, the hole didn't, st- that hole did not set up good on the tee shot for him. It, it's like, because, oh, you know, he couldn't, he's a great driver, but he couldn't drive it. I hear people say this, you know, he couldn't drive it in the fairway when he had to. Well, not, not, not necessarily, because, because the thing is, is that was a tough fairway for him to hit. And when you're hitting the ball, 320 yards like Rory is and like Bryson DeChambeau is. I mean, the fairways get so tiny. I mean, I teach people all the time, swing a driver, you know, 85 miles an hour. Their club face can be three or four degrees off. And they're still they're still finding their ball. Their ball's still probably in the fairway or real close to it. You you get a degree off. When you're swinging at the clubhead speeds that those guys are swinging at, you're one degree off and you got problems. You got problems. So the tolerances are so tight. But the trade-off is it's better to hit the golf ball out there a long way, have a shorter shot in, and and that's the that that that's the trade. So it's bombs away as you as you go. And and that was what he did. Got a bad break, knocked it up there short of the green. And then he's got a pitch shot. And and that's under the circumstances, wheels are coming off a little, three put on, on 15, uh, you know, or gets it, or hits it over 15, makes bogey, three put on 16, has to get it up and in on 17. Now you're short of the green on 18. You had a two shot lead. Now you're trying to hang on. And th- that was a... That was a pretty darn good pitch. I mean, you gotta you gotta give a guy credit for that. That was that was a good pitch shot he hit on 18. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say big pluses on that. 
All right, then, but but I, I, I further analysis of that is it would have been better to leave it below the hole. I will say that. Now, you'd rather have six feet below the hole than four and a half feet or four feet above the hole. He had a difficult putt on 18. That was a difficult putt on 18. That is not an easy putt. He played that outside the hole. I was thinking, though, when he's standing up over that putt, he was, I'm thinking, he's, you know, he hits this thing a little too hard on that fast downhill putt. He runs this thing, you know, a little bit hard. It's going to lip out on the high side. And what does he do? He missed it on the low side. That putt broke a ton. I mean, a, a, a ton. He had it played out at least a cup outside the, the, the left side of the hole and still missed it on the low side. That was not an easy putt. So, and people say, well, he missed two putts coming in. He missed, I understand he missed two putts coming in. He missed one putt that no way in the world he should miss. Okay, I'll give you that. But to say he missed two putts coming in, the second putt was not easy. And I, I, I keep pointing that out to people. I mean, the second putt was not an easy putt. So let, let's, let's, not, let's not pretend like that was just some kind of tap-in because that was far, far from a tap-in. But, here, but here, here's, here's what I really want to get to in this, in this conversation. This is, this is what I've been, been thinking about. This idea that that when a player like Rory gets on the lead, it's just supposed to be some foregone conclusion that he's going to win. And, and he acted like that because, I mean, he was all, you know, pissed off, down in the dumps, whatever you want to call it, you know, bolted out of there, didn't congratulate Bryson, uh, didn't stick around, didn't do the media. And you know, a lot of people got on him for that. But to, to me, I look at it and I think, like, what were your expectations? I understand you're, you're, you're upset that you didn't win. But here is the reality. This is the reality, okay? This is the stark reality. For players who have won more than three majors, more than three majors, they win one out of every three times they are in serious contention. That means 33% of the time. For players who have won more than three majors, Rory's won four. Okay, so he's in that category. Three or more majors, they, 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 three or more, they win one out of every three times. Okay, so Jack Nicholas was slightly better than that, about 35%. And he was on the lead or tied for lead on Sunday, which is how you define or I define serious contention. Serious contention is not backdooring a top 10, backdooring a top eight, backdooring a top five, meaning you shot 65 on Sunday, you were in 18th place, you shot 65 and you finished eighth and people say, there he finished top 10 again, he's getting ready to win a major. You weren't, he wasn't even in the tournament. He wasn't even in the tournament. So. I, I don't I don't look at all these top 10 finishes that they're, they're a sign of good play. They're not a sign of knocking on the door. They're not knocking on the door is on the lead or tied for the lead on Sunday. And you need to be there three times to close one out. That's what you need to do. OK, so so Tiger was different. He's a, you know, he, he, he was a, he was different. He won at a rate of about 50 percent. When he was on the leader, tie for late. And remember, Jack Nicholas, you know, 18 majors, he finished second 19 times. 19. But Rory, all of a sudden, gets in contention, gets in contention, and it's supposed to, it's like, it's supposed to just close it right out, just like automatic, just to shut the door. Rory's up by two, uh, party's over. That's not the way it works. That is not the reality. Uh, they are, it is not, I don't, in two shot lead, odds were that was the one, if, if he's in contention three times, maybe that's the one that he should have won, but should have, would have, could have. Now, here's the, here's the fact, and this is what people just don't seem to understand. Rory McIlroy has not won a major since 2014. He, how many times, and I ask people this, how many times do you think he's been in serious contention? Now, nah, don't give me the top 10 stuff. I hear about that all the time. Don't give me that. How many times has he been in serious contention in a major championship since 
2014. How many times? Serious contention defined by on the leader tied for lead on Sunday. How many times? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to you right here. Okay. In 2022, Rory McIlroy was tied for lead going into the fourth round at the Open Championship. 2022. This is since 2014. In 2022, Cameron Smith shot 64 this last round and beat Rory. He beat him by two shots. There's nothing you can do about that. I mean, the guy shot 64. Rory shot, he lost by two shots. Played great. I mean, that's just, that happens, okay? That was one time he was in serious contention. And another example is the U.S. Open last year when Wyndham Clark won. Roy McIlroy lost by one. Roy McIlroy was never on the lead or tied for lead on Sunday. In that he was always behind in that tournament. Now, you could say he's close. He was close. But was he on the lead or tied for lead on Sunday? And the answer was no. So the second time, the second time in the last 10 years, since 2014, the second time that Roy McIlroy was in serious contention was at the U.S. Open this year with Bryson DeChambeau. And he had a two-shot lead with four holes to go. And, and maybe that should have been the one. But the statistics say this. For players who have won more than three majors, they win one out of every three times they're in serious contention. Roy McIlroy has been in serious contention two times since 2014. So if he's going to win more majors, and I, I, I don't think he's going to go, you know, no majors for the rest of his career. He's going to win. And in order to win, though, he needs to be in contention more often this was one time he was in contention that, that's great but but once every or twice every 10 years is is not somebody that's knocking on the door for majors and i i think that the expectations to to that it's just gonna automatically happen you know he's rory back if you were tiger woods and he's not like i said he's not if you were jack nicholas and he's not it, it wouldn't be automatic it wouldn't be out of now. I hadn't seen those guys give one up like that. I will say that, but it's not easy. It's not easy. And and you're playing against great players, Bryson DeChambeau, great player. And that was a hard, hard putt on 18. So I'm not, I'm not of the camp that Rory just absolutely pissed that tournament away. I can't believe that happened. Yeah, he made some mistakes. Yeah, he hit some bad shots. That putt on 16 was atrocious. There's no two ways about it. But to a certain extent, it was leveled out by the fact that he made three bombs that day. I don't know if they're bombs, but two putts over 30 feet and one putt over 25 feet. So that kind of canceled, you know, that canceled out. That canceled out, you know, the, the short miss to a certain extent. Because usually if you three putt on Sunday, you're not winning – you know, you're not winning a, a, a U.S. Open. But but Bryson DeChambeau three-putted as well. So, you know, one of them three-putted 15, one of them three-putted 16. Okay? Uh, it, you know, it, they, they both had a three-putt. So I just look at it like Rory's a great champion. He'll win a major again. I think he, and I, you know, it's easy for me to say, but I, I think he's a little hard on himself thinking that that was automatic. I should have won that. Uh, I gave that away or whatever he's thinking that, you know, has him having to take three weeks off to, to recover. I'm like, hey, get in contention. Keep doing it. Get in contention again. Not just play good. You know, he's like, I'm playing good. I'm going to win. I'm playing good. I'm going to win. You can't play good and win. you got to get in contention. Serious contention. I'm a leader tied for lead on Sunday. And if you do it enough times and you're a great champion, and he is a great champion, he will win another major. And my guess is, is that the next time he's on the lead or tied for lead on Sunday, I bet he finishes it out. 
And if he does, he will be at 33% for his last three times he's been in serious contention on a major. And that is the average that the players have for closing out when they're on the lead or tied for lead, and they've won at least three majors. So it won't be a surprise when he does it to me. All right. I hope everybody enjoyed the podcast. Hit the follow button on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcast. You can see the Hank Haney podcast on my uh, YouTube channel. So check that out, Hank Haney podcast. And you can hear the Hank Haney podcast on nofilter.net. You can see it on nofilter.net. And you can also hear it on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts. Appreciate everybody being with me. Hope you have a great day. And we'll talk to you soon on the Hank Any Podcast.